Good morning, everybody, and welcome here to Strain Presbyterian Church to our live stream this morning. Uh, it's great to have you join with us if you're online and if you're live. Uh, if you happen to be watching this later on um, on YouTube, again, welcome. Or if you're even li listening to it on a CD at a later time, again, we're glad that you could join with us uh, just for our online digital service, but if you want to call it just a different way of doing things this morning. We know it's not just strain. Um, we know we're joined by a number of churches, especially Caridor and Ballyfrenis and Bally Black. So good morning, everybody. I trust you're well. I trust you've had a good week. Um, I trust there hasn't been too many challenges this past week. Uh, and just as we come together this morning to, to worship in this different way, that we would know God's blessing. Um, I just want to start straight away with a, a verse. Um, it's actually from Proverbs. It's Proverbs 18, verse 10. I'm sure the number of people would know this verse. But uh, again, just in these days, I think this verse is particularly appropriate. Uh, and I love this verse. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Again, about how God just looks after us and cares for us, especially during these difficult times. So let's just start off by coming to God in prayer this morning. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can gather digitally um, to just to focus upon you and to think about you for this period of time this morning. Lord, thank you that in the midst of everything that's going on, you are with us and you help us and you care for us and you're always there for us. So Lord, thank you and continue with us this morning, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So folks, good morning. It's lovely to see you. Um, I see one name bouncing up on the screen, and you're about to get a little mention in a minute. So we've come to our birthday blessing spot. I did put a little post up earlier saying that if anyone knew of any birthdays, uh, please do let me know. So th this is, I'm not letting any secrets out. Um, Julie Gillespie, you had a birthday during the week, and you were 40. So happy birthday to Julie. Also, happy birthday for tomorrow for Drew Hiles. Drew is going to be 74 tomorrow. So happy birthday for that, Drew. Um, that's all the birthday blessings that I have so far. If I happen to get any more, um, I will try and see them and put them up on the screen. But let's just pray for, for Julie and for Drew at this time. Lord, again, thank you that as a family we come together and as a family we celebrate and we can, we can have this bit of fun together. So for Julie and for Drew, uh, Lord, just thank you for birthdays. Lord, just be with them in their families, bless them and all that is going on with them, and just keep them safe, we pray, in Christ's name, amen. It's also really good to tell you something else, maybe you've already spotted this on Facebook, because I've put a post up on it, but um, if, if there's one face that you associate with this building here of Strain, uh, the, the one person who seems to know everybody uh, and has all the different connections, it's the one and only Ross Workman. Um, Ross knows, happens to know everybody up and down the country, and we have a joke about it, but it's great, Ross, that you know so many folks. Uh, but Ross, we know you've been working so hard over the years with rugby, it's been your passion, and we know you've actually stood back from doing a lot of that now. But um, Ulster Rugby have awarded Ross the Dorrington B. Faulkner Award for his services to rugby. So well done, Ross, well deserved. And um, I hope you enjoy your retirement, uh, and don't worry, we'll, we'll find ways to fill up your time for you. So, congratulations, Ross. It's Sunday again. We come to worship God. We come to do different things. We, co we come to think about his word. Uh, we come as a family. We come as adults. We come as children. We are all gathered together. And even though we're not singing this morning, um, because we're in this building and it's just me this morning, it doesn't mean to say we don't still worship God. Because um, it's our attitude of heart. So let's just quieten our hearts before I come to speak to the children. And let's pray again. Father, during this time, it, it's making us think again about our relationship with you and what it's all about. Lord, it's making us re-examine how we do things and why we do things. So Lord, we just are, are so grateful that we can meet, even in this distant way, to sit around your word, to hear something from your word, to draw closer to you, to talk to you and to have you answer us. So Lord, just this morning as every morning, please be with us and help us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 
Okay, boys and girls, I want to talk to you about a different fruit this morning. And I wonder if you can maybe guess what it is. It's, it's tucked underneath this lectern that I'm standing in front of. And, and you never know what you find under a lectern. Um, if anyone happens to be in Bally Black Church over these next few days, if you look under your lectern in Bally Black, you'll find a bounty bar which I left behind. So it's been sitting for longer than 72 hours. So first come gets it. So go for it. But boys and girls, I wonder what's underneath this lectern at the minute. Let me try and describe this fruit to you. Um, from the outside, it looks really hard. Some people actually say that it nearly looks like it has armour outside. And it's not a coconut, because we've already done a coconut. Uh, it has spiky leaves on top of it, green spiky leaves, which grow up out of it. And the very centre of it as well is hard and you can't eat it. And whenever it grows, it's not like the Presbyterians, it nearly looks like it's growing with its hands up in the air, because it's growing on the end of stalks. So when you make your hands into fists, I stand back a bit, it grows like this at the very top of the tree. But the surprising thing is, whenever you cut into it, it's very sweet. I wonder, has anyone guessed what it is? Well, I've got one of them here, so I'll pick it out from underneath the lectern. It is a pineapple. There you go now. Now, it is a tough old coat. I mean, if you drop it, it'll bounce along the ground. If, if it hits you in the head, it will be very sore. From experience of last night, the leaves are very spiky. Yep, well done, Kerry Pineapple. The leaves are very spiky because I did get one stuck in my finger, so I know it's sore. Uh, but it, it's, it's sweet inside. It's surprising. And you know, a pineapple reminds us of a story from the Old Testament, from um, a time whenever God was looking after his people. Whenever, they, whenever one of them, Moses, was asked to do something surprising. Let me set this down. Do you remember I said if you looked at a... a oh, well done, Jack, for guessing pineapple. That's it. Uh, well, if you remember whenever I said it grows on the top of the tree with its hands up like this here. Well, in this story in the Old Testament, God's people were going out to fight a battle. And they were told that if Moses were to stand with his hands up in the air that they would win the battle. Now, as you know, if you've watched anything that happened on TV, or kids, if you've done any of the online games and you're fighting a battle or anything like that, a battle doesn't happen really quickly. It takes a long time. I wonder what would happen now if I got you to stand with your hands up. Who thinks they could keep their arms up in the air for a minute? Who thinks they could keep their hands up in the air for two minutes? Or five minutes? Do you think maybe you keep your hands up in the air for an hour? Or do you think your hands would just get tired and they would fall back down again? you think so? I think they would. It was really surprising that God wanted Moses to keep his hands up in the air for so long. And he couldn't. His arms got tired. And whenever his hands fell down, the people were getting beaten. So two people came along. They got him sitting down on a rock and they helped to hold his hands up. And because of that, they won the battle. Now, that was a really surprising thing for God. They ask, hold your hands up so that you hold the battle. And sometimes, God does ask us to do strange and unusual things. But we need to trust him. We need to trust that he knows what's best, that he knows what's going on. Because at the end of the day, God is in control. And we thank him for that. So the next time that you um, maybe eat a bit of pineapple or have a little bit of pineapple juice or eat maybe a pineapple flavored sweet, can you remember about how a pineapple is surprising? From the outside, you think it's going to be tough. Inside, it's sweet. It can be surprised sometimes what God asks us to do, but knowing that he looks after us and he cares for us, that we are in his hands. Let's pray about that this morning, boys and girls. Father, thank you. Uh, just as we think about your word and we think about what it says to us. Lord, we are surprised so often by maybe what you ask us to do, uh, by the things that happen. But Lord, just help us to trust you, knowing that you know what's best. Father, we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's come and let's read God's word together. I'm going to read from John chapter 6. Verses 25 to 37. Let's hear what they say there. 
When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very, tru very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Amen. And that's the end of our reading for this morning. As we're going to come into a, a series, as I said last week, on the I Am sayings that we find in the Gospel of John. But before we come to that this morning, before we come to think about those, that, the first of those sayings, let us take time just to pray this morning. Let's pray um, for wisdom this morning, just as lockdown continues, and as we look at ways in which lockdown is being eased, let's pray about that. Let's pray for us all to be responsible in that, uh, and as we make decisions, that we have been making them in a responsible manner. Um, Many churches are meeting this in coming week, or maybe have met already, to decide how they can start to change things, or if they can start to change things. Let's pray for wisdom for our church leadership as we look at that, as we start to look at what it means for us at churches. But this morning as we gather, and as we are, are fortunate to be able to do this, let's remember those who are struggling this morning. Let's remember those who are grieving this morning. Let's remember the family of Noah from Belfast uh, in this very difficult time, the loss of their, their precious son. And let's remember them this morning. So let's come and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can do this this morning. Thank you that we can continue to meet through the medium of the internet and Facebook and streaming through CDs and being able to listen to what has been said. Thank you that even though we are apart, we are united. Lord, that's something that we should be able to identify with with you. Because even though we can't see you, even though we can't touch you, we know that we are united with you through your son, Jesus. He is the one who brings us together. And this morning, Father, it's our love for you, our love for Jesus, that brings us together even though we are apart. And we know that wherever we are, wherever we are sitting this morning, whether we be sitting at home watching this, whether we be out for a walk somewhere, maybe sitting in a car, uh, on a beach, just watching this, Lord, that you are with us. And Lord, we thank you that we are not just a small part of your family. It's, it's not just strain. We thank you as well that we are joined with Bally Black and Carador Bally Freeness. But Lord, we thank you that we are joined by so many who are our brothers and sisters this morning as we do this. And Lord, just help us. Lord, as we, as we come to look at the rules and regulations around lockdown and easing lockdown, give us wisdom. Give wisdom to our sessions. As we look at um, how, if, if we can use our buildings, and if we can, how we can use our buildings, um, or, or, or what is best for our folks, Lord, just give us that wisdom that we need. And we pray, Lord, that as we do that, that, the, that we make decisions in your will um, for your glory and for your honour. Lord, help all of those people here involved in this. We, we pray for our government, for our assembly as they look 
towards our country, our little nation getting it up and running again. And Lord, as businesses start to open again and as business owners deal with what has to happen, just be with them and help them, we pray. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of doing this this morning. Uh, but we recognize that as we do this, some people, their world has been turned upside down. We remember Noah's family this morning. We just pray for them. Lord, I, I, I'm sure they are distraught this morning and losing their son. Just ask that you would draw alongside them and help them at this time. We pray for the people who, who did the searching and we think particularly about those people who found Noah. They just, Lord, what they faced as well, that you would help them as they cope and deal with that. And for those who come alongside Noah's family, just to surround them with love and care at this time. Give them the wisdom that they need in doing that. Lord, just be with us all this morning. Continue with us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Just to say, folks, that um, our own session here um, will be meeting tomorrow night to discuss um, the lockdown and all the rules and regulations and what it means for us. Um, and once we have done that, then we will communicate to you um, exactly what is going on. So um, watch this space, as they say, for whatever happens. Now, let me ask you a question. I've seen lots of jokes over lockdown um, about how we're eating more, how we're um, maybe exercising less and getting out less. You know, you've seen all these funny cartoons maybe on TV of people who put on weight and they're inside their houses and they're saying, now lockdown's over, how do we get out of the house? You know, it's a bit of a joke. But, you know, we, we do, we, we snack and things. So I wonder, I wonder what's your favorite snack? Is there something that you go to every time maybe you're peckish? Maybe you're not, it's not time for lunch or dinner. Uh, and maybe you want something to, to snack upon. What, what do you turn to? Is it a bit of fruit? Um, do you eat maybe a few crisps? Is it a bit of cereal? Is it sweets? Or do you go in the toaster and lift a little bit of, do you go to the bread bin and lift a little bit of bread out and put it in the toaster and maybe make yourself a bit of toast? That's part of our culture, isn't it? Toast. Um, you think about, we talk about having tea and toast. If you're in a hotel, if you remember those days, uh, you know, in the morning time, you would have got a cup of tea or coffee and they'd ask you, would you like some toast? Whiter brown bread, would you like a little bit of mix? Uh, and even if, if you know, bread features so heavily in other things, a traditional thing in, in, a, in a chip shop, going in and getting tea, bread and butter and making a chip butty. You know, bread figures quite heavily um, for us. And in this passage here, Jesus talks about bread. Bread is one of those staple items, isn't it? Something that we use. It's either in your freezer, it's, it's in the kitchen cupboard. You know, bread is something that's been around for a long time. If, if you think even about any sort of culture, bread is that sort of staple. And it was no different. So for Jesus to actually feed the 5,000, which is what happened earlier on in this passage with bread and with fish, there's that staple diet of bread. And as he starts to talk to them, he says, Look, you're only following me because I gave you food to eat, because you had bread. And then he drops something in. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. Bread was something that was special to the Israelites, to the Jews. During their time in the wilderness, they grumbled and complained very early on to God, well, to Moses. And they said, you've brought us out of Egypt. We're going to starve out here. We're going to be thirsty out here. We've got nothing to eat. Let's go back to Egypt. Look at what we had in Egypt. And, and okay, we were slaves, but we had food and everything. And they complained and they grumbled. God answered that by giving them manna in the morning and quail at night. Manna was a bread. And if you, you read it in Exodus and how they it came down, it settled overnight, how they had to collect it. And then how they were able to cook it. And there was different ways they could prepare it. Uh, and then eat it. But they had to eat it all in that one day. Or lest they try to keep it for the next day. Or keep it for later on. It spoiled. It went off. They had maggots in it. Except on a Sabbath. They had to go out on a Friday and collect a double portion. So that they weren't working on the Sabbath. And so that then they had food to eat. And God did not allow the manna to spoil on the Sabbath. So Jesus is nearly 
He's suggesting something to them here as he speaks to them, as he talks to them about food that doesn't spoil, because it's fresh in their mind about the food that he's just given to them. And they're asking about God, you know, and they're asking, give us a sign. Sorry, I've just fed 5,000 of you with a few loaves and a couple of fish, and you're asking for a sign? Did you not see the sign that I've just fed you? Did you not see the miracle that is in front of you? You see, there was, a, there was an idea, and it's still there amongst the Jewish religion, the Jewish culture, that whenever the Messiah would come, manna would rain down again from heaven. Moses has done this for our people. And whenever the Messiah comes again, he will bring this manna with him. It wasn't Moses that brought that manna. It was God. It wasn't Moses that gave that bread to his people. It wasn't Moses. It was God. It was God providing life-giving food for his people. It was God saying, look, trust me, rely upon me. I will look after you and care for you. How often do we try and rely upon ourselves? How often do we try and rely upon our own strength? Upon our, our own, what, what we can do? Instead of giving it all over to God. God is the one who's in control. God is the one who's got it. We just need to surrender to him. That's what they needed to do. They asked, you know, what do we need to do? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. We just need to believe in Jesus. Believe that he is the Messiah, that he's the one that God sent. Jesus went on to talk to them, you know, if you have this bread, you know, it's not, it's, it's this bread that comes down from heaven, gives life to the world. And they ask, give us this bread. And then Jesus said these words, and this is the saying. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. They asked about bread and Jesus gave them more. He said that if I am the bread of life, he declared himself as being the Messiah. He said, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. Have you ever truly been hungry and thirsty? Have you ever truly, really needed food? There's probably very few of us have actually faced that. We might feel a wee bit dry at times because um, we haven't had a drink for 10 minutes. You know, I keep a glass of water under here. Maybe we, we think we feel hungry because we haven't eaten for a few hours. But have we ever had true hunger, true thirst? where we know that we need that to keep going. That's what Jesus is talking about here, but not in a physical term, but in a spiritual term. He's talking about how we need him, how we need God. Again, this, he, he really is resonating back to the journey of the people in the wilderness. They needed to realize who God was to trust him, to realize that they needed him in that situation. And he gave them so many opportunities to see that and to trust him, and yet they keep throwing it back in his face. Doesn't sound too different from today, does it? Whenever we do the same, God shows us that we need him. God shows us that if we trust him, he will satisfy that hunger, he will satisfy that thirst. He makes our lives complete. He gives us what we need, what we truly need, that relationship with him. And if we feed on it, what he gives us, we'll not be hungry again. We'll not be thirsty again. Look at that last verse that we read together this morning, verse 37. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Whenever we come to God, whenever we, we put our, ourselves into his hands, he doesn't drive us away. He holds on to us and he never lets go of us. You know, I often talk about the image of, whenever it talks about God holding us in his hand and how Jesus says, not even the wicked can be plucked from my hand. 
if you take your hands and you imagine that you imagine your hands imagine those are god's hands and try and place yourself in those hands and imagine those hands cupped around you not to suffocate you not to crush you but to protect you where god can see you where god can care for you where he can give you what you need that's what god does for us that's what he wants to do for us how many times do we try to scramble out of those hands how many times do we try to push them away whenever we should be resting in them whenever we should be taking comfort from them whenever we should be realizing that they are the safety that we need that's the god who we have that's what jesus talks about he says i'm the bread of life and it's more than that as we as we come to god every day as we learn from him he continues to feed us from his word he continues to give us what we need so that we won't be hungry we won't be thirsty that means we won't be looking for more like it's god but it's something else it's not god is everything god is complete we just need to trust him jesus wanted these people to realize that they need needed him They want them to realize that he is the one they've been searching for. That he is the one that gives them everything. And it's no different today. We're just the same. We just need to trust him. You know, for those of us who have trusted in God, great. But let's just keep trusting him. Let's keep realizing he gives us everything. That we don't need more from somewhere else. All we need is him. Yet life is filled with other things. We work or we're retired or we have family or we don't have family. We have have cars, we don't have cars. You know, there's so many things. They're temporary. They come and go. The thing that is eternal is our relationship with God. What we need to put our effort into is our relationship with God. You look at church. I'm standing in an empty building apart from myself this morning. But I'm not alone. You're sitting at home somewhere around the world. You're not alone. God is with you, giving you everything that you need. We just need to trust him. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let's eat that bread. Let's drink of that fountain. Let's be satisfied by what Christ gives us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Jesus is that bread of life. That he is the one who has done everything for us. Lord, through him we have a relationship with you lord thank you help us just simply to trust you whenever we're feeling down and depressed lord help us to turn to you whenever we're feeling high and elated help us to remember to keep on holding on to you lord help us to remember that image of being in your hands cared for at every stage father thank you for it's in christ's name that we pray amen Over the next few weeks, as we start to look at more of the I am sayings, and you think about bread and what bread means and life and giving life, we'll look more at what it means um, in those sayings in our relationship with God and our relationship with Jesus. So please come back and join me next Sunday for the next of the I am's. And if you can join me again at nine o'clock in the morning, as we continue to read through the Psalms and to pray together, please join us for that. But in the meantime, Take care and may God richly bless you. Thank you, folks. Bye.